Hi, HR Nation. It's Chris Rainey. Welcome to HR Leaders, the show where we interview today's most successful and innovative HR practitioners. Today's guest is Simon Vigas. Simon is the former Corporate Vice President of HR at Novo Nordisk. Simon, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, Simon, to fill in the gaps, tell uh, HR Nation a little bit about yourself and uh, your journey um, within Novo Nordisk, which I understand is where you spent most of your career. That's true. Um, I've been, uh, I can say it for a start, I've been all of, uh, all of my professional life. I've been in, in HR roles, uh, but uh, as you also said, I've been uh, 16 years uh, in Novo Nordisk. Uh, and I also, I would say I would characterize those 16 years also very much within HR business partnering. Uh, because when I joined the company back in the early 2000s, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, becoming one of the first HR business partners uh, uh, in, the, in the company. That was a fairly new concept at that point of time based on, on Dave Ulrich's uh, concept of HR business partnering. Uh, and I, I found it, you know, attracting because it was a, it was a good combination of understanding a business uh, and also, of course, uh, using my professional knowledge within HR. And as I have a, maybe a little bit, I don't know, untraditional background because I come from a background in business economics, I, I actually also enjoyed a lot of the strategic stuff, uh, understanding the business. So for me, that was a, it was an extremely good uh, opportunity and also joining a company in, 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 in pretty, uh, you can say, substantive growth uh, at that point of time. Um, so, so my journey in, in the company has been uh, of, of different roles, a lot of them, as I said, in, within the HR business partner. And I also uh, had the opportunity to, as I said, because the company was growing, in the beginning it was 9,000 in Denmark, 7,000 outside of Denmark. Uh, I also had an opportunity to get more into, you can say, global roles. It was maybe a, a little bit of a coincidence because when I were in the beginning, that area actually took some responsibility for a new site, the production site, manufacturing site in, in Brazil, uh, and also in China, where at that point of time, China was close to no one in terms of manufacturing companies. So, so I had the opportunity to also join uh, some, some, some more global uh, roles and un get to understand, you know, what does it mean to be uh, uh, employed uh, and work uh, in a different uh, area than in the little Denmark where I was uh, in, the, in the beginning of my career. And that was also why I, after some years uh, in the company in Denmark, had an opportunity to or said yes to an opportunity that came uh, for me to, to join uh, uh, Novo Nordisk in France. And at that point of time, it was not very normal to leave uh, HR or go <laughs> for HR positions outside of uh, your own uh, country. Everybody knows that in HR, well, you need to know the local stuff uh, and all the local laws and so on. So if you want to you know, take care of anything, then everything, then, then you don't, then you stay within your own own country, so that was a that was a pretty new thing, and that gave me some opportunities to, to uh, you know, also uh, work with leaders uh, in in a different country. Yes, still in Europe, but but still France and, and Denmark. There are some substantial differences in, in the way uh, you can say we look at leadership. Uh, so that was a that was a new uh, challenge for me, and it was also where I had the first opportunity to work with you can say the sales uh, and the commercial side, uh, which also attracted me a lot. And, and from that on, I, I mean, I, I, moved, uh, I moved back to, to, to Denmark and from that I, I held different uh, HR uh, business partner jobs, always been part of leadership teams, uh, always been close to the business. And lucky for me, it's been a progress. I mean, I had an opportunity to, to start as a director in, in, a, in, a, in part of Europe became then a responsible and vice president for for bigger area where also uh, Asia and Pacific uh, was part. And then in the, in the very end of my career, I then joined the uh, North American operation. So, so I've been more or less all around the world, <laughs> uh, opportunities uh, all around the world. And, and, and with some of the same, but of course with, with, with growing responsibility, I mean, uh, but some of the same uh, context, because I really like to, I like this, you can say, um, um, interface between the business and, and how can you make sure that we have our people doing the best and how can you make sure that the organization and strategy fits together. So that is something that has always attracted me. And, and then, of course, you can say the third thing, which I might not have mentioned, is the leadership part. I, 
I had the opportunity to come leader back in in 2005, uh, and and I also found that you know quite uh, attractive, not from a uh, how can I say a power perspective, but more you know having the opportunity to to work together with white people and and also you know do more in terms of uh, what I wanted to do together with the, mm-hmm. the rest of the organization. So so that is that that's that's maybe in a, in a, I don't know if that's too many words but at least a no. little bit about what I what I've done uh, so far <laughs> well the good thing is uh, normally people can summarize their career quite short because they've only been there for two to three years but in your case you know it, it you can't really summarize se- uh, 16 oh. sorry or 17 career in in in, <laughs> in a minute it's quite difficult so um well firstly as I mentioned earlier congratulations on being on the role so long and that's a testament to your business for keeping you engaged and always giving you the opportunity to, to grow and that, that's really what clearly what's kept you uh, in the business and engaged and excited and um, um, involved you know because that's the hard part and uh, I, I know now um, that you're that you're looking forward, forward to your new role um, which which is we haven't announced yet but I'm sure you'll let letting everyone know soon um, so you've got everything ahead of you so which is fantastic yeah. um, just going back one step before that just very briefly what was it that compelled you just to, to to start a career in HR or pursue a career in HR? Uh, maybe I touched a little bit, uh, but a little bit on it. But but I think uh, if if I go back in my in my uh, in my student years, I I I did actually uh, study, um, you can say, more the economic part of uh, of, of business, and, and I also started spend a lot of time in, in in looking into statistics and all those kind of more traditional. Uh, stuff also but I also I, I actually also when I was in my uh, my university time I I had the first encounter with organization and strategy and I found that extremely thrilling because I I see that you know the way you construct the way you design the way you you look upon your organization has fundamental uh, you know, m- meaning for how you actually um, will you be successful? How you actually will run your business? How communication will run? Uh, all sorts of things uh, y- you can manage by designing your organization and and also attracting the people, uh, you know, the right people to the organization the right way. So for me, this 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 combination of understanding, you know, where are we going? And then designing your your structure, your organization, mm-hmm. and the people that you get is extremely interesting and extremely important. And it's something that is, I'll also say, it, it's a, it, it's it's something that you really have to be, you know, uh, focused on. Because if you're not, uh, then then you can all sort of fall, fall apart. So for me, this combination was uh, something I already saw in my 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 first years that I I really I really liked that. And those discussions because that's that's a little bit where you where you try to combine some things. It's not. Sure. I mean, you cannot you cannot just sit at the statistics and then design your organization, or you cannot just you know you have you have to take all things into consideration uh, when you design things. And by the way, it's moving all the time, so you also have mm-hmm. to you know go back and, and have a look at it again and again. I really I really enjoyed that. So from very early on, unlike quite a few people I speak to, you were already looking at both the business strategic side and HR and working out how they can both benefit each other and assist yes. each other on that journey. Yes. Yeah. Which is fantastic. So you've already come in with that mindset, which is quite great because, you know, only in the last five, five to eight years as, as has HR, you know, moved over to more the strategic side, as you know, whereas yeah. it seems that you, you saw that very clearly early on and the impact that the, 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 the HR can have on the business and uh, yeah. you know, bringing in the right talent and the right people to lead. So, that's quite interesting. Well, yeah. on that point, could you share one transformation or project that you're most proud of that you've had, you've delivered in your career? Yeah, I, I think I can I can do that. I I, I can mention one. Uh, in fact, in the last many years of my career, I, I worked a lot on transformation. Also, because I would say that in in general, in the pharmaceutical sector is under a lot of transformation right now. But also, the company you know, Nordisk has been under transformation because. As I said in the beginning, it's been a it's been a, a very growing company for a long time. But in the last couple of years, uh, due to different things and due to to also massive, uh, you can say, pressure from uh, from from different sides, it's it's been a little bit less, uh, and and the growth has been uh, under pressure. So 
I would say uh, when I joined uh, the European uh, region, North and Central, back in 2009, that was just in the middle of, of the European crisis. Uh, and what was happening, which was quite interesting, uh, also seen from an internal perspective in Novo Nordisk, was that, that Europe, which was a quite big organization, it's the oldest part of, of, mm -hmm. of the company, and a very big also in terms of turnover, was not, doing, was not doing well, at least not relative to the rest of the organization, because Europe was doing, you know, four or five percent growth. And the rest of the organization managed more, much more than double digit. Even the US at that point in time with 25% growth. So it was, it was massive growth everywhere. So from, from a headquarter point of view, Europe was, was you know, the old man. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the one who could not really perform. And, and the, the fact what happened uh, also in our region was that we were starting to, you know, feel that we were not good enough. There was a, a, a you know, a feeling of people also our talents maybe start to look outside of the company and all those negative, uh, negative uh, things were starting. And, and even the leadership team, when I was part of, we were, we were not very constructive. We were having discussions about, you know, things that we couldn't really control or, or negative discussions. So we started a, a, a process uh, that was uh, something that, that I was uh, put, put in front of, uh, of, of trying to, uh, you know, get back on the engagement track again. Mm -hmm. and, and there were multiple things that we started to do. One of the things from, a, from an organization perspective was to also to push back to headquarters, actually, actually to our very top and say, you know, you need to look upon Europe as a quite successful because we are. You just have to look and compare us not to China and <laughs> the US. Yeah. It's all context. Compare, yeah. compare, us, compare us to a European peers. Uh, and so we started to do that. That was, you can say, the more compara uh, comparison part where we actually start to look into, are we actually doing good? And we were. And, and then we started to, to look a lot on the narratives, also the leadership narratives. What are we, how do we actually, you know, present ourselves? Are we proud of ourselves? Uh, and we started to change that as well. And you can say, thirdly, uh, and I'll, I don't have time to go into details, but, but thirdly, what we did was to work a lot on our talents and also the people that we attract. So we made sure they understood that they were really valued. Uh, and they also found, you know, that we are really attractive and that we had a future. I mean, there was something to stay in the organization. So I would say that transition was not something that happened you know, overnight. It was a, a hard transition over a longer time. There was a lot of actions going on. But it was, it was a transition from, from, from an organization in crisis to an organization being stable, understanding it was a good you know, uh, contributor to, to the company uh, and a stable contributor to the company. And also, if you compare to some of the other areas, maybe, maybe more stable, more re reliable. Uh, and, and that in, in terms, we got people to stay and we mm -hmm. got also people to be more Engaged. So I would say that that transition, uh, I've been quite proud of seeing a, a Europe uh, coming from an unstable crisis situation to a much more stable and, and happy situation. So fantastic. And so what were some of the specific steps that you took to re-engage those employees in the business? So, so, so one of the things was, I think, I always think that it all starts from from the top. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if you're not able to, sure. lead as leaders, to, to send the right signals. So first of all, as I said before, we, we made sure that from the very top, and that even came from the very top of No Noise, the CEO, we made sure whenever Europe was addressed, it was addressed either in neutral ways or at least, uh, or in positive, if we can get that. Because before, as I said, they, they addressed Europe in negative ways. So that was, a, that was a one thing that we started to address. We, of course, took the same medicine, so to speak, in the leadership teams. Mm -hmm. But we started to focus much more on things we could do something about. I mean, you can always, when you're frustrated, you can always talk about all those kind of things that is not working. But well, why don't we, you know, look at those things that, that are working and that we can do even better. So we started to go more into solution mode. Uh, that was that was one part of the engagement, and then the other one was, as I said before, we focused on the talent. We focused on our talent people who were the leadership talent, but we also made a special program which were called super drivers. And super drivers are those people in the organization who actually are engaged, almost by by nature are engaged. <laughs> and how can you? Why are they engaged? And we took those people and put them together. It was around I don't know forty. It was seven, eight percent of the population, so forty people mm -hmm. in the organization that we actually put together and and started to, you know, also get some inspiration from sure. and find out why are they uh, why are they so engaged 
And how can we spread that engagement into the rest of the organization? So, so throughout that, a little bit of in investigation into why are these people engaged? What does, why does it make sense for them to stay in our organization? And then build on their knowledge and try to spread that to the rest sure. of the organization. And what, what did you so learn from the super group? What did you learn? From the super group, what are the sort of the key stand some of the things th- you learned? Some of the things which is obvious, I would say, is that that those people who are really engaged, they feel that their job is very meaningful. Mm. They, and it they sense have, of purpose. Yeah. That that is it. They and they have they have leaders who are very close to them, who are interested in in understanding where they are and are interested in in you know moving them. And I'm not so I'm not necessarily talking about moving them out or moving into another department. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about moving them development-wise, because I think that that's we all want that. We all yes. want a job. Where, I mean, you want a job where you, where you want to feel that you know, it's meaningful. You want to feel that you know when by the end of the day that you have you have accomplished something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to feel that okay, well, I've done a great job today, but I can do maybe even more tomorrow. So we, we all want to develop. I think that was some of the the characteristics of those people. Characteristics of those people, and then they have probably also. Uh, and I, and that's a little bit more difficult to find, but they had a very positive. I mean, they they they, they some people naturally have that attitude. They have that. Can't, they have that. They always <laughs> uh, look for 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 what they could do instead of you know sitting uh, together uh, maybe at the water cooler and and, um, and, and spreading, spreading uh, the <laughs> moaning. So that was some of the characteristics of those people, and we and we tried to to build on that, and also we put try to put them a little bit in the light. Some of them didn't like it a lot, but we tried to put them in the light in the right way. So. Mm-hmm. So we could use that. Yeah, so that was that was one of the things that I really, you know, I liked a lot. I think it was a good process and it, fantastic. It, it and what was the way. impact on the company then? Once you, of course, it's always a long going process. But what impact did you did you see? Did that did you see at the top that that had on the business? So 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 first of all, I think that that the and it's of course also part of the story of the company. But but I would say it it it, it came clear that. That it's not you don't have to be, you know. It, it's not about. I put it another way: if, if you're only successful if you drive doubling growth, no, you're successful if you can, you know. First of all, manage to beat the competition, which we could in Europe. You're successful if you if you are positive towards what you're doing. If you're striving to do more, uh, if you are looking for opportunities and all those kind of things, that is what makes you successful. It's not the pure numbers, because I mean, in a European setting, it would be impossible. You have a Germany, which are not, uh, uh, they're not very positive towards new uh, new products. So <laughs> how can you drive growth when you have a US where you can take price uh, increases sure. every year? So the competition was- You can't measure there. it the same, so, can you? Exactly. So we try mm-hmm. to go beyond the, the, the economic uh, numbers and, and try to go a little bit more deep into what does it mean to be successful. And honestly, I think, I mean, I've been, I've been both in the U.S. and I've been in Europe, and I'm not saying anything bad about the U.S. They did a good job. But I think at the point of time, at least also when I left the, the European organization, they were more productive simply to the fact because it was needed. I mean, you need to be very on your toes to create the, that growth because it was just more difficult than it was in the US at that point in time. So, so I think that was part of the picture that we also managed to change in the organization. And also, uh, one thing maybe more, that from the very top, always try to be at least neutral when you talk about your people. It, it's, not, it's, it's, not a, it's not a good thing to to talk negatively about your people, at least not in your there's no positive. Probably, there's no positive outcome, right? <laughs> like, no, and, and in, what, in, a, in a Danish, what's, what's in a Danish, Danish company, in a Danish company, <laughs> it's interesting, I'm Danish myself, but, but in a Danish company, uh, irony and sarcasm sometimes is, is something we, we have a humor, yes, but you have sure. to be careful. How, yeah. you use, that's how interpret it, how people exactly. interpret it. And it's not seen in the same way everywhere. So I would say yeah. that was some of the things that, uh, that we saw happen uh, and, and changed the environment of the company, I would mm-hmm. say. So what advice would you give to someone, you know, if there's other, of course, there's many of our members that are on a similar journey right now that, that you've gone through many of the multinationals that we work with. What advice would you give to other HR leaders that are just starting that journey or, or on that journey at the moment? Well, I think, I think, uh, I think what I would do is I would, I would, um, my advice would, to, would, to, would be to look at, you know, look at very holistically 
on, on, on this, uh, this piece. I mean, engagement comes from many sources. Of course, from an individual perspective, you have to create meaning. I think that's, that's something which is very clear. But it also comes from the outside. It comes from how you, you compare. It comes from uh, how leaders, uh, you know, talk about the, the business, how leaders are when they're gathering. So I would say you have to attack uh, this engagement part from many different angles. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not enough to make an, uh, a survey <laughs> and then look into the survey and then, uh, okay, this, yeah. this is this, this, uh, and then try to fix it. Uh, you have to be proactive and you have to, to start that dialogue and you have to probably uh, attack it from many angles. Uh, that's, that's, I think, uh, um, my best advice. Fantastic. Well, well, thank you very much for sharing that. I'm sure a lot of our members will take away a lot from that they can implement in their own organization or at least provoke their thought, uh, their thought process uh, along the way as well. So where we are now, obviously there's a, um, you're, you're off, obviously off to move into an organization um, and you, you, very exciting times, uh, but you personally looking around you at where the industry lies right now, where do you see sort of the biggest room for improvement in the HR industry? Uh, you know, a lot of things are going around, you know, digital technology, et cetera, et cetera. With you personally, what, 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 where do you see, what skills, I suppose, do you think will be more important in HR in the future? I mean, now where I'm coming from, that, that's almost obvious. But I think, I think we, as you said before, we have only, we only spent a short time in HR really focusing on what we could do to the business. And we really... I think we have a long way to go to really become strategic and really to earn our, you know, seat at the table, as you say. Mm -hmm. uh, if I look around me, I, it differs a lot from company to company where HR, you know, um, where the seat is. I mean, everywhere in a company, no company would have a management team without finance. They couldn't dream about that. There <laughs> yeah. will be someone responsible for, for the finance. But you find even big companies were eight. I mean, I was in, in a company, you know, I love the company, but in fact, there is no uh, executive vice president for HR. The one who's responsible for HR has that among other areas as well. So, so for me, this, this, this thing about us being even more strategic, um, combine our uh, understanding of business uh, with people, organization, I think we still have a lot to, to do within that. I, I, I fully acknowledge the technology, <laughs> technological challenge that we have, and that's important. Uh, I think that's maybe more some tools. Uh, sure. That's from my expect, uh, pers mm -hmm. uh, perspective. It's something that, that can leverage a lot of things and it can help us, you know, do things smarter, quicker, uh, and you know, and by the way, also generate data with, uh, faster, which is a good thing to do when you want to be strategic. But it is a tool. So I would say those things about becoming more strategic, really becoming a, a, a strong source for, 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 the, for the CEO and for the leadership, that's something that we need to develop even more. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think you, you hit a good point there is they're both, when you, when you mentioned technology and being strategic, they, they support each other, don't they? Because yeah. to be more strategic, you need that data. If you, you, if you do have a seat in the boardroom, you need, you know, sure. it, it's great to have sure. that, your, your own judgment. You know, yeah. but if you look at finance, look at uh, marketing operations, all of the decisions are driven by data, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, it's, but, but to that, I would say it's, it's also a question about how we, how, how do we, how do we sell it? And there's something which I, I'm not, I'm, I'm probably the best one to know, but, but I think people always say, but data, data are not correct or blah, blah, mm -hmm. it's always, a, 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 but if you look at finance data, they lose, use a lot of assumption as well. <laughs> they just are of persuading that those assumptions are the right ones. So I think that what we could do in HR, we should also be, be, be better at focusing on how we can sell the data, not just showing the data. Sure, sure. That, that's, yeah. uh, that's has to be both. Has exactly. to be both. Because yeah. you, get, you get some people that are very much great at telling the story and, and, and the impact, et cetera. And, uh, but, and then you get others that are just purely data-driven. I think it has to be a balance. The most successful leaders I speak to have, are good at doing both. Um, you know, yeah. telling the narrative and also going, look, here's the data to back it up. Yeah. And if you're great at doing both ends, then it becomes very difficult <laughs> yeah. for the team not to go, not to, to move, to move with you in, in that direction. And yeah. also I think it's, um, it's, as you said, it's a cultural thing as well, still in organizations. Uh, in yeah. my mind, if you don't have HR on a board, then it seems like a pretty crazy idea. Um, but 
when I first started at 17 years old, 10 years ago, there was hardly any company no. that had HR on a board. And, and I've only been in industry for, for 10 years. I'm very young still. But even I've seen the dramatic shift. Yeah. Um, and I think HR leaders are tired of that conversation. You know, HR in the boardroom. You know, it's something which has been on our programs and any event you go to, it's still there. So it's still a yeah. challenge. It's yes. still something that people are battling with. And yeah. I'm still quite shocked that 10 years on, that it's still a conversation that even needs to be had. I think yeah. if, you're, if you're an organization, and <laughs> you should have HR on the board. So it's pretty, it's pretty crazy there. Um, yeah. but, uh, uh, <laughs> fantastic. And um, wh- one of the things I was going to ask you as well, in your, um, in your career, in terms of moving around different roles in the industry and different cultures, et cetera, has that helped you in other areas of the business, getting that exposure to other parts of the business, but that perhaps you wouldn't have had in, in, a, in, a, in a traditional role? Yeah, to, to move around and see, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, uh, one thing that you of course get from obviously from from taking global roles is is, is the cultural aspect. Uh, but I would also say, from moving around, I've I've seen many sides of the business, uh, and I've seen many. Uh, I mean, one thing is of course being uh, being in different leadership team, but also I've been both in product supply manufacturing. Uh, so I've also worked a lot with R and D earlier mm-hmm. in in my career. And you, you of course get a, a, a fair amount of the business understanding when when you when you join all the, these different areas. And 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 being through that journey also, as I said before, I was in Europe uh, where market access for the really started to be an issue in the pharmaceutical world. In our pharmaceutical world, I would have to say, <laughs> in diabetes, it's probably been an, an issue uh, elsewhere earlier. But that was something that really started there. And you could see the same picture coming in China mm. when I was there maybe some years after. And now for really, really strong and clear in, in the U.S. So, so, so when, you, when you get that, you also get some good possibilities to, um, to, uh, to, know, to, to guide the business because you have seen some of it before. Of course, it's different. It's a sure. different time. But you have some of the same patterns uh, in the business. So... Uh, so this thing about moving around is also to get some of the sickness, early sickness. And sometimes it's U.S. that have the early sickness, sometimes in Europe, sometimes in Asia. Uh, and you have some things to, to compare, compare with when you, when you join a new organization. So mm-hmm. obviously it, it's giving you some, uh, some, good, yeah. uh, some good opportunities. I've heard it more and more recently. Um, the number of CHROs that I've had on the show recently, when I've asked them their advice of, you know, what advice would you give to other leaders? One of the things which is reoccurring, which is get out of your country that, you're, that you <laughs> get out of the country that you are in and, and, and go somewhere else. Um, and I was quite shocked when I first heard that, actually, if I'm honest. But now more and more over the last few months, it's, it's advice that keeps coming up. Um, cause as you said, you're exposed to new parts of the businesses, new cultures, you know, when you do go back to your, your organization, perhaps in the national world, you can relate to that cause you've been part of R and D, part of manufacturing, et cetera. Um, and you, you have that sort of full vision across the business, um, as well. And also you've got the different people perspectives on, on how different cultures and different countries view the business. Cause I'm sure it's quite different. Yeah. As you mentioned, the U S perspective to to um the national ba- um uh, basis where you were it was very different it seems <laughs> in terms yeah. of the cultural yeah but 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 it, it's everywhere the, the fun thing when working in hr is that that nevertheless nevertheless that you you work i mean if you work i, I work with the japanese management team it's extremely different from, uh, <laughs> I can from imagine. Denmark, denmark and it's even more different different from the u.s and despite that, it, it's more or less the same thing when we get into each of the person, we all have the same idea of why we are coming to a job. I mean, I said before and earlier, this thing about meaning and mm-hmm. development and, and wanting to accomplish something, that, that, is, that is more or less, you know, the-, the That doesn't the, change. The yeah. of, that, that doesn't really change. But then as, as, as I fully agree with the one that, that, you, that you quoted before, that that you know get out get to understand different cultures that would also increase your awareness and by, about yourself by the way why when sometimes you think you're extremely funny and some somebody in <laughs> or, or in uk someone, maybe, someone in japan else, doesn't find would, it funny <laughs> they would not laugh uh, then you find out maybe that's because of some of the values or some of the culture that you come from is, is like that mm-hmm. it gives you it gives you a good uh, some good opportunities to get to understand both uh, other cultures but also but also yourself so um, i think that's uh, that's valuable. 
Yeah. Great. Well, look, that, that leads us quite nicely on to the uh, quick fire round where I'm going to ask yep. you five questions and you have no more than 30 seconds to give us some amazing answers. Are you ready? Wow. <laughs> um, what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming a senior HR leader? Uh, number one thing was was probably um, was was the thing about being acknowledged as someone who had really a, a professional, you know, side one one who had something to 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 to, to chip in with. Because I think, as I said before, that that's some of the challenges that we have in HR that uh, that uh, it's always the soft skills that we talk about. So I would say that that's that's probably the number one. Okay, and uh, what's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Uh, the best, the best piece um, business advice is probably to look for opportunities. I would say it's maybe not the business advice, but but looking for opportunities everywhere. Sure. It goes in HR, it goes in sales, uh, because when you look at opportunities, you you start seeing things differently, uh, and you also forget the, uh, all the negative things. So I think that's uh, that's fantastic advice. Always that. moving forward. Always looking forward. Always look for for what you can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's one book that you'd recommend? To our audience and why? I, 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 I continue to come back to Thinking Fast and Slow by David Kahneman. Uh, and it's, it's not really a leadership book, but it's a, it's a book that gives you a lot of insight into how we make decisions, uh, how we uh, human beings are, you know, are uh, towards each other. It's extremely insightful. I will advise everyone, uh, both in HR, but also everywhere else to, to read that book because it gives you a lot of insight into why we make decisions the way we do fantastic well i'll certainly link that in the description um share one internet resource that you use to increase your personal productivity or or stay in tune with current events yeah i, I use linkedin uh, <laughs> that's my uh, that's that's probably also what the go to uh, yeah <laughs> but, but I, I do that it's it's a good it's a good source of uh, of, of you say of information on what's going on it's a good source of connecting uh, mm-hmm. it's always fun to 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 meet people that way and uh, Sure, and I use lots of that. Yeah, no, it's how we can. It's how we spoke. We know we spoke a lot by lot by LinkedIn. I think yeah, I would yeah. say eighty percent of the members that I have on the show is through LinkedIn. So yeah. it, it clearly works. In yeah, it to, works to well. with people. It's crazy, don't you think that in where we are now, if you look sort of I don't know, even five years back, that you could reach out to anyone anywhere in the world yeah. in in such a quick, easy format to get a, a response. It's just, it seems pretty amazing, you know, that there's yeah. no excuses really <laughs> for, for not being able to connect with the right people or, or, or network in, in this day and age. Um, so pretty great on that one. Um, could you share one thing around uh, your, your past businesses that, that you were most excited about? No, so, or, 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 or always to say, you know, in HR, what is the thing that you do in HR day to day that you're most excited about? Let's say that. Okay. Um, you about the role. I, I, I was ready for answering the other question, but but in HR, you can do, what, the, other, you can do the other question. No, <laughs> what, what, I, no what I think what I what I'm most excited about in in, in HR is I think that um, I think that that there is a huge opportunity to um, sort of work more with uh, with what people can do and uh, what capabilities uh, people have to to enlarge that and and work with the. Work a lot with development of people. I think when sometimes uh, I have thirty seconds, but sometimes let's take your time. In, in, organi- <laughs> in organizations, <laughs> we are so we are so locked uh, into those positions we are in, and there are so much many capabilities to actually unlock and free up uh, that potential to get people to do more. I'm not talking about in what terms of hours, but in terms of mm-hmm. capabilities and competence. So that that I think I would mention. Fantastic. Well, you've given us some fantastic and actionable advice. So I know our members will be a lot better off for it. So thank you very much for that. Um, give our listeners um, sort of one parting piece of guidance and also the best way to get in contact with you if, they, if they'd like to. Yep. Um, so so I, I would quote uh, from, from Gary Jones, uh, if you know him. Uh, so he says, be yourself more with skills. Uh, and the reason why I, I use that quote is because I think that's so important and that's also something that characterizes, I think, my own career, that you have to be authentic, have to be true to yourself because that's where, that's where you can grow from. But mm-hmm. then you also have to be aware of that what you wear today, I mean, you can be better tomorrow. So keep on growing, keep on, uh, on building on yourself. Uh, that's uh, that's one, uh, one thing I think which, uh, is important for everyone. It's important for myself and hopefully also for others. Fantastic. Well, and, 
Go on, sorry. Get, yeah, and get in, in, in contact with me, uh, LinkedIn, I would say, is a good, <laughs> uh, good opportunity. Uh, I, I can be found. My, my name is very easy. So uh, I don't think there's anyone uh, no. like, like me on, on, on that one. So uh, I, would, uh, I would say that's the best place because that's also what is kept stable. I mean, emails sure. and so on change, but uh, I'm, I'm the same on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. fantastic well look thank you again appreciate you taking the time to join us um guys make sure you head over to hrdleaders.com there you'll find all of the show notes on the episode all, all of the links will be in the description um to everything all of the resources will be discussed um also if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the uh, to the uh show on itunes or youtube whatever's more preferred um thank you again for joining us and sharing your journey with the audience and um i wish you all the best with the new role and um, I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot.